All right, so we're going to be starting in Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. So uh, y'all can get on the U version app, get get started with that, or you get your uh, the old paperback. I, I, that's crazy that we call this the old paperback, you know. But get your you can get your Bible out and we can flip to it. So we're going to be starting in Hebrews 12, 1 through 2. So I'm just going to read over the scripture uh, for us to get started. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Can I get an amen for that? All right, because that right there has some powerful things in it. And there's something that was very powerful to me that I had overlooked every time I had read scripture. And it's right in the beginning. It says, therefore, since we're surrounded by so great cloud of witness, that right there I've looked over. And Josh is always, my, my very own preacher here at the Light Church, the senior pastor, is always saying, hey, if therefore is therefore, it's therefore a reason, right? And I've been looking it over and looking it over. And then it just kind of clicked in my head. Man, there's something unique about that that I've overlooked, and it's the fact about being surrounded by witnesses. All right? And the way, the way I'm going to kind of tie that in, there's power in being around people who are witnesses, but also being around people that are holding you accountable in faith. There's power in that. So, um, and a lot of people, most of the time you'll think about, when people hear about accountability, is that something that they like? No, 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 no. Like you're, you're late. All right. Do push-ups. What I always heard, you know, how you gotta, you know, usually when you're late or anything, like you start talking for right now, I'm, I'm, I'm coaching kindergarten through second grade. All right. You talk while coach is talking, you got to run. So these kids are just running all practice. All right. So, so, but anyways, being accountable for some, most people don't like that, but what I was looking at that in the first part of this is, that accountability, all right, them witnesses being around you doesn't mean that they even like what you're talking about. Man, it produces fruit. It produces fruit in your life. Like, not, not apples and oranges. I'm talking about the fruit of the Spirit. So, um, I have a few quotes on accountability, and they come from a good book that one of my very good friends had me read. All right? So, uh, I, I just have a few of them because I believe it creates a mindset that sets us up for amazing joy. So, the first one is very short. It says, discipline equals freedom. How many of y'all believe in that? How many believe that if you're disciplined in your faith, you're going to have more freedom in your faith? I believe so. Also, on top of that, the next one, it says, when setting expectations, no matter what, if substandard performance is accepted and no one is held accountable, if there are no consequences, that poor performance becomes the new standard. Y'all kind of understand what I'm saying now? It's okay to be held accountable. It's okay to have a standard. And I, I love that fact because if we all have a standard of loving Jesus Christ with all of, all of our heart and it's high, man, people are going to know us for loving Jesus Christ with all our heart. And that's the kind of standard I, I, I want to get set. So that's enough for my tangent over accountability. We won't. We, we're not preaching over accountability, we're preaching over joy. So I'll get off accountability real quick, but we're going to get back to the joy side of it. So um, going on, it says, then the word says this, get rid of every weight, your burdens. All right, so when we think of weight, I'm not talking about Adam, you know, carrying around 120 pound rucksacks. I'm talking about weight in your life. All right, these, I, these are weights that I've personally had in my life because every time I'm up here preaching, I'm talking about something that I most likely have dealt with in my own life. So when I'm talking about burdens, I'm talking about sadness, fear, pressure. Because right now, just in the Christmas holiday, there's some pressures that come on in a parent's life. Can I get an amen on that? Like, just, just the cost of toys nowadays. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. Uh, these toys, oh, I, I forgot a Furby? I didn't know what a Furby was. I was like, why does it cost so much? So, like, so... So there's, there's, just, there's just some pressures, you know. But the heaviest all is sin. Sin is a pressure that will pack you deep down in a hole that you don't want to be in. 
All right. So those are the kinds of things whenever we're reading the scripture and it's talking about weight, it's talking about spiritual weight. It's talking about getting that thing off you, get it off you. All right. So I'm a, I shall always, always say, you always say, all right. All right. So I'm, I'm kind of like have that in my head, but we're going to keep on going with it. Now, getting rid of that, it's tricky. So I want you to understand if you're someone in here, I empathize with you. I have sympathy with you. Understand that because I've been in places where getting rid of those weights, they're not easy. It's not easy to get rid of those weights. And I understand that because they're attached to you. They're like gripping you. Um, and so they're, they're very hard to get rid of. So the way I like to break it down and the way I break it down for y'all is the exact same way I break it down for you. So you're going to be like, man, this dude's talking like crayons with me in here. All right. So, but the best way I can think of it in Justin's goofy mind is it's like a yard sale. How many of y'all have ever had a yard sale in here? Raise your hand. All right. So we're going to get, we're going to get simple, but this is the way that my mind thinks. Okay. Talking about a yard sale. All right. So whenever I'm talking about this yard sale, I want you to be thinking about how we're going to get free from things and then step into joy. Okay. Y'all see, I'm getting pumped up. I'm about to do a backflip off this stage here in a second. All right. So I would, but my back can't handle it. Okay. So so I want, to, I want to put this in your mind. All right, we're thinking of yard sale, thinking of yard sale, getting rid of junk, getting joy. Okay, so you have junk in your house, right? Lots of it. Lots of it. People have lots of junk. All right, we buy stuff all the time. All right, so we take the junk that's in our house and we put it outside of our house, right? And then, okay, we're thinking about Jesus. All right, we're wrapping this all around and encompassing. We're thinking about Jesus. We got junk inside our house. We put it outside of our house. And then... Someone comes and purchase it for you to get a profit from it. Mm. That making sense? Amen. Yes. All right. So now you, so you got, you got all your junk that you just had in your life, in your house. You put it outside of it. And now someone's purchasing it. That sounds familiar, right? Someone's purchasing something from you and it's junk. That's because Jesus Christ, when he did what he did on the cross, he purchased all the junk if you believe in them. So that that I know that sounds simple, and you're like, man, does, it, how, does that really make sense? But it does. It's that easy. If you if you take that that stuff that's in your life that's weighing you down, you get it out of your house and you say, Lord, I don't want this no more. He's gonna buy it. He's gonna take it from you. He bought it with his life on the cross. Amen. He's gonna take it from you. So. I know that's simple, but that's that's how I think. All right, and I'll, I'll put this little tidbit note in there for people. True repentance, so we're thinking about garage sales still. True repentance is like, like this. Turning away from that stuff and not running back to Facebook Marketplace and Amazon and filling your house back up, okay? Y'all kind of understand where I'm going there? So that's what we got to do. And man, Amazon is on my front door every day. Like... <laughs> So I understand that's hard to tell. So let's get back to Hebrews 12, 1. All right, so then it points to the fact that in that same verse that life on earth, our spiritual race is a marathon. Marathon, uh, I've been hearing a lot about Adam and Jennifer running long distances. Most people I've talked to about that, they're like, I don't even like to run from here to my car. Like, let alone running. Jennifer's running like 20 miles out there. All right, so, but it's an endurance race. So, how many of y'all have heard the old saying, all right, that it's uphill both ways? How many have ever been in life and have felt that it's uphill both ways? Some people might be in here right now saying, man, life feels like it's uphill both ways. Life feels like it's uphill both ways with a 100-pound rucksack on my back right now, you know? I'm carrying some weight. And that's what we're trying to talk about today to get rid of that weight so we can run the endurance race that Jesus Christ says is life. But how do we do it? We give it to Jesus. We got to give everything to Jesus. Got to give everything to Jesus. So give the weight to Jesus so you can run. Give your junk to Jesus. Give whatever you got. Give it to Jesus so you can run with endurance. I have some, I have some definitions for simple words that I probably should know the definition of, which is endurance. I have a definition for endurance. It says the ability to to persevere hardship or adversity no matter what the circumstance 
by maintaining your faith in Christ until the end. That sound, sounds like some endurance that I want to have. Because I understand life has things in it. I've experienced it. I've seen it. I've had loved ones that has had it. Another, another part of that definition is the ability to sustain a prolonged effort in your faith. I want to continue to grow in my faith. I want to continue to grow in my love for Jesus. I want to continue to understand the things that are so mysterious to me. I can just think about so many things in life and about Jesus Christ and about how the Lord works. And all I, all I revert back to is Isaiah 55, 8. And I'm like, your ways are so much higher than my ways because I can't think of, I think I still get wrapped around. the. So I, this, this is not even my notes. I get wrapped around the cross. And the fact that Jesus loved me in the midst of my rebellion against him. How many can, how many can raise their hands and admit that they were in a rebellion against Jesus and he loved them in the middle of it? That should be every hand in here raised. Because Jesus Christ loved you through that. He cared for you. He wanted you. So that's just, that's just truth. That's just truth. Uh, I like how Matthew eleven twenty eight says, most people will know this. Jesus says, he, he says, all of you come to me who are heavy burdened and I'll give you what? Rest. Come to me and I'll give you rest. So if you're here today carrying the heavy burdens, heavy burdens, I'm going to say, let it go. I'm going to say it multiple times. Let it go. Let it go. And like I said before, I understand if you can't. Understand if you're in a place where it feels like you can't. Sometimes it's going to look like where you say, Lord, Savior of my life, I can't take this anymore. I need you to take this from me. And then you just have to put it in his hands. And he's going to work in it. I'm, I see some heads nodding. Sometimes you have to do that in life and be like, I, I don't know how this works out. I don't know how this is going to go, but Lord, I trust you. And you're going to take this from me. So that's, that's where I'm trying to get today. I, I'm just wanting people to understand, all right, when you get things off your back and you hand them to Jesus and your relationship grows, the joy is going to grow in your life. It's going to grow. So let's look at Hebrews 12 too. It says, look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for joy that was set before him endured the cross. Okay, I'm going to reread that one more time. Look to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. So I want to fix our eyes on Jesus once again. Y'all can just look at the cross. All right. Fix your eyes on the cross. Kind of, kind of start thinking about Jesus and what that means, the scripture that we just read. And I want to I I point out something. 2,000 years ago, that did not mean what it means today. That meant suffering. That meant pain. That meant all kinds of different things besides joy. I'll tell you that. But now when we as Christians look at the cross, Jesus Christ has changed something that was pain. So this is, this is you in your life. He's changed something from pain and agony and has turned it into hope, peace, love, joy. That's what that represents in our life nowadays. All right, so that's what that represents in, in our life. So, like, I'm just like, like, I keep getting amped up and I keep getting fired up because Jesus can think things that mean something that is terrible, that is terrible, and turn it into good and turn it into joy. So that leads me to this point. All right, joy isn't happiness. It isn't just happiness. How many, how many people have, have put joy and happiness together most of their life? I'm raising my hands because that's what I've been taught. Joy and happiness are the same thing, but it's a mistake. That's not what it is. Joy, you can have joy and happiness at the same time. You can, and I, I hope that everybody lives in that, but that's not how life goes, all right? That's not how life goes. Joy is infinitely stronger than happiness, okay? All right? 
Joy is so much stronger than happiness. Mm. All right, if you have, all right, <laughs> I'll laugh at my own notes. <laughs> Sorry, you okay? Because <laughs> it's so true. <laughs> all right, how many of y'all, how many of y'all are like me that you can have happiness? Me and Shelby can be riding in a car laughing. So sometimes we get some laughing fits. We're about to like pee on ourselves, as Shelby would say. Like we're laughing so hard. And then a car whips in front of me and cuts me off. All right. Or I get a call, a bad call from work. That joy that or that happiness, that, that happiness is out the window. It is gone. Like. You should have just chunked it out and it just flew off like a, a, whenever you roll down the window and you have like a piece of trash that's just flying around and then it sucks out the window. That's how my happiness will go if something like that happens. All right. So that's why I'm saying like, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm trying to make that point is it's rooted in something much deeper than just happiness. It's rooted. All right. And whenever I think of rooted in something, I think about being rooted in Jesus Christ. I think of Jeremiah 17, 8. So we can look at that real quick. It says, They are like trees planted along a riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by the heat or wor worried about long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. So that's, when I'm talking about being planted in something, that doesn't mean if you're having a great time. doesn't matter if, if your kid is getting called to the office every day at school. I'm talking about, okay. So it doesn't matter if you have some kind of diagnosis. It doesn't matter. If you're planted in that, you're going to have joy through it all. So another thing is, is, is important to understand is the Holy Spirit grows the fruit of joy because it's given to you. Galatians 5.22 says that. The Holy Spirit gives us all those fruit of the Spirit. He gives it to us, and it's grown by your relationship in Jesus Christ. As your relationship with Jesus Christ grows, you're going to start figuring out that no matter what happens in life, that there is a fact that your salvation in Jesus Christ can never be taken away. Nothing can take that from you, because who holds that in their hand? Jesus. And it says that, it cannot be taken from his hands. All right? It can be taken from ours. So don't hold, don't hold that guarantee in your hand. Only Jesus can have that guarantee for you. So joy isn't dependent on circumstances. It's dependent on relationship. Y'all can write that down in a book. All right? <laughs> Y'all can write it down in your notes. Put it in your, in your whatever. Your, I, I use notes on my phone all the time. So Shelby's like, I like to write things down, but I use notes on my phone. So... Just remember, it's not dependent on your circumstances. It's dependent on your relationship. So I, I, I have this as well. It says, how many, how many of y'all have a, a faced emotional pain or emotional heartache or even betrayal? How many of y'all have ever faced any of those in life? Are we, we got it. We got it. Like everybody's hands just went right up. So everybody's, everybody's kind of tracking where I'm tracking because I have to think this way to completely understand all this. Because it blows my mind. All right. So if we have seen those kind of things. And we've gone through things in life like that. How can, how can we be happy and have joy for that? It's because it's based on something more than that. It's based on eternity. Where, where do all y'all want to go after this life on earth? Let me hear it loud and proud. Heaven. 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 All right. Let me hear it. Heaven. Heaven. We're thinking about heaven. We're thinking about everlasting things. So that's, that's why when I look at this, I'm like, wow. Jesus is showing us perfect example because whenever we look back at, at Hebrews 12, 2, it's talking about while he was being beaten, while he was being sent to be put on the cross, while all that stuff was happening, it's the perfect example. He's being hung on the cross to die for nothing he did, but everything that we did. He had joy. Why did he have joy? Because he knew the outcome. He knew the outcome that it was for you and it's for me that we, by believing in him, will go to heaven. 
So that's a crazy kind of love that I can't even explain because I, I can experience something and almost hold a grudge over it for how long? And Jesus taking all the pain of everybody's sin on him? That's wild to me. That's, uh, I'm getting blown away just talking about it. So I, I love to point back to Romans 10, 9, just because if there's anybody in here or if anybody that's forgotten it, I want to tell you this fact. It says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So if there's anybody in here that is missing out on that joy that I'm talking about, that, that stuff that sustains you through the good and the bad, if you believe in Jesus Christ in your heart and confess with your mouth, you will be saved. And that means that you go to where? Heaven. Heaven. Man, that's, that's, what, that's good news. Like, that's great news. That's the best news. So I'm, I'm, I'm going back on things that the Lord has, like, literally beat me up over making this message. And that's going to be joy grows by having a relationship with Jesus. I mentioned that. But having them as your top priority. Having them as your top priority because I put down some things in my life. And you can just give me an amen or, or something like that. If some point in your life you put these as your priority when they shouldn't have been. Money. Amen. Your career. Amen. Fame isn't really one for me. All right, But working out, I, I've had that as something where I, I, I invested too much time and too much of my priority on. I'll even go as far as to say my kids and and my wife. I put them above Jesus Christ in my life before. I know that's a hard one to hear if you're a parent. It should be, the way it should work is your Lord and Savior, your wife, then your kids. So if you're someone that has even your, your, your wife and your kids mixed up, I want you to know how that goes. All right, husbands, all right, I'm sorry, I'm just pointing out one, but it's, that's, that's how it should roll, all right? But who's at the top? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus is at the top. So, man, we, we, we just got to stop pursuing those things. And, man, I, I, I'm someone who sometimes the Holy Spirit will speak to me. And it says in the middle of something as far as like a, a, tele, uh, like a video on Netflix or something, I'm just like, man, these priorities are all messed up. Like this stuff that we're watching every day, I, can, I spend my hour each morning getting up at 530 but I've watched this for four hours, binge watching episodes. Does it sound like my priorities are right? No. And I see that. I'm human. So I like getting back in my lazy seat, watching the TV, be like, oh, this is nice. But man, I love those facts whenever I, I change my mentality, I turn off the TV, I go pick up a book that someone who loved me that gave me and has some good stuff about Jesus Christ, I start reading it, it starts changing my life. So we got to change our priorities. And I will say that if you are someone who seeks after those things and that's the top of your priority, because I've been there, you'll be a miserable person. If you chase, if you're in here and you're chasing after a career and you have that as your top priority, I've been there. It will make you a miserable person. I'm not saying don't pursue those things. I'm not saying don't pursue your kids or your wife. I'm saying if you put it as your top priority, They'll make you miserable because you're pursuing over what's most important. All right, so I'm, I'm going to start getting back <laughs> into the habits. I know I'm beating up on some things. And church, the reason I'm doing that is because I love you. I care about you. And we're a family. And I want you to understand that I've been there. If you're there right now, I've been exactly, not exactly, because I can't say I've been in your situation, but I've been in a, a similar where I put things in priority over Jesus. So I want you to have that, that joy that captivates you. All right? I want you to have that joy that only comes from knowing the Lord. And I'm going to get back. That captivated made me start thinking right now. We've got to get back to being captivated by Jesus Christ. We have got to get back to that. Like, there's so many new fads. There's so many new things that come out. There's so many things that catch your eye 
I want, I want everybody kind of just to think about it. The first time that you're on fire for Jesus Christ, think back in your head. I can remember that being before I even had a relationship with him. It was singing a worship song and I did not even know what was going on. I can remember the Holy Spirit filling my life and filling me up and I didn't even know what was happening. But I can remember that feeling. I can remember that someone told me that Justin, you must, they didn't say it like this, but this way I was thinking, Justin, you messed up shameful sinner. There is someone that you don't know about and he can save your life. And I was like, you know, I probably got me. I was like, I don't even know, know what I need saving, you know, like what I need saving from. I'm, I'm having a great time, you know, but I did. And whenever I heard that worship song, man, it pulled me in. All right. So if, if that means you got to think about your youth camp or whatever, a worship service, the birth of your child, you broke, you broke free from addiction, whatever that looked like for you. And you felt the Holy Spirit come over you. Go back to that. Go back to being captivated for Jesus. Our Philippians 4.4 4 says it this way. Re rejoice in the Lord always. And it says again, rejoice, right? Rejoice. All right, so we can rejoice for some birthday parties, right? We can rejoice for all kinds of different things. I'm saying rejoice in the fact that Jesus Christ saved your life. Rejoice in that. Because now since I have a relationship with Jesus Christ, I, everywhere I go, everything I do, I want him to be with me. I want him to be right there beside me. I want Jesus to be in everything. And I know I'm not perfect, but that doesn't matter if I'm going for a run, I want to have him in my ear. If I'm, if I'm going to work, I want him to be giving me advice so that I don't snap on somebody at work or something like that. I want to be showing Jesus to everywhere I go. I want to be showing that instead of what I used to be. And that's where joy comes from whenever Jesus is taking over your life. Joy, and you reach down, and everything that you see, everything that comes from him is now in your life. And it starts transforming you. It starts making you have joy. I'm trying to explain this the best way that I can because this was a hard one for me. Hard one for me to understand. My wife actually pointed out this scripture and explained it better than any of the scripture that I even have told y'all today. So I want y'all to look at John 16, 20 through 22. And I'm so oblivious because I just taught this to the youth. She's like, look at John 16, 20 through 22. It says, I tell you the truth. You'll weep and mourn over what is going to happen to me, but the world will rejoice. You'll grieve, but your grief will suddenly turn to wonderful joy. It'll be like a woman suffering the pains of labor. When her child is born, her anguish gives way to joy because she has brought a new baby into this world. So you now you have sorrow now, but I'll see you again. Then you will rejoice and no one can rob you of that joy. All right, moms. Y'all can give an amen for that because how many of y'all in here? I know that y'all understand that way better than the dads. All right. I, dad's just like, oh, I'll cut the cord. I'll pick up the baby, you know, and what? But moms, that's I was thinking about that. That's so true. You go through crazy pain. But then right, at, right as you're done going through that crazy pain and you're holding your baby, you have joy, right? And it's a joy that's unexplainable. It's a joy that makes no sense because you just went through the worst pain of your life. But now all of a sudden you have joy? So that's the kind of joy that I'm talking about. The joy that makes no sense. The joy that in your circumstances you should not even think that you should have it. But you have it because it's rooted in something much deeper than our simple little minds, I guess is what you could say. I'm trying to trying to explain the best I can. But man, it's, it's something that is deep down inside of you and you have to lock it down in there. So it's something that you keep inside of you so that whenever comes up, anything comes up in life, it's going to be there. No matter what, it's going to be there. I want, to, I want to look at this last scripture before we get out of here. So it's going to be in Zephaniah 3, 7. It says this, For the Lord your God is living among you. Amen? Amen. 
He is a mighty Savior. Amen? Amen. He will take delight in you with gladness. With His love, He will calm all your fears. He will rejoice over you with a joyful song. We sing praise and worship songs to the Lord. We kind of flipped it on the script right there. The Lord is rejoicing over us. You're dead right. If you decided to make Jesus Christ your Savior, if you decided that He is Lord over your life, if you're in here today and you just came to know Jesus Christ today, or if you've known Him for however many years, the Lord rejoices over you. And I want you to leave here knowing that the Lord does that. He rejoices over the fact that you know Him. So I want you to, I want you to think about that scripture as you leave here. I want you to leave here knowing that joy doesn't depend on your circumstances. It depends on what you're rooted in. So as Stephen's getting ready to play these sweet tunes to Jesus, all right, we're going we're gonna to end. I'm going to end with this being the invitation, all right? Take heart in the fact that no one can rob you of your joy or your salvation in Jesus Christ. If you're someone who has been in a relationship a long time with Jesus, or you're deciding to start today right now, know this truth. Lock it deep down inside you because Jesus Christ is coming back someday. Amen. And all of you who have a relationship with him, all right, all of you who have a relationship will be called up into his glory for the rest of eternity. That's where your joy is at. It's not anything to do with the circumstances of this world because I'm telling you right now, the world is full of being happy right now than the next second being sad. It's full, it's full of having a lot than having a little. It's full of change. It's full of ups and downs, hills and valleys. But if you lock your salvation in the fact that that Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross, knowing him, man, your joy will never flee you. All right, there's not even a clock, so I don't even know what time it is right now. So, it, what is it, 2.30? All right, so, but I want you to know, as we're getting out of here, as we're getting ready to worship, that Jesus Christ is your joy. And if you plant that deep down in your heart and always know it, no matter what life throws at you, you'll be all right. Find somebody that's in here that loves you the same. Because we are what? We're a family, right? Come together. Be a church captivated by Jesus. And help each other through the hard times. And have joy in knowing that Jesus Christ is our Savior. All right. We're gonna, I'm going to say a prayer that Steve is going to get rocking and rolling. So, Everybody bow their head. Father, Lord, heaven, I love you. I thank you for Jesus Christ. We are right now, we're in awe of you. Lord, I'm praying right now in the name of Jesus that if people have weights on their back, if they have pain right now in this season, if they have fear, they have something gripping them, Lord, I pray that you set them free. I pray that they see the joy in something that they can hold on to in the midst of that. Now, just like Peter, when he's going under water, Jesus reaches down and pulls him up. We believe that you'll pull us out of anything. So Lord, I pray that right now for anybody that's in here. God, I pray that they understand that they can give you all their junk. They can give you all their life. doesn't matter if they're Sin is so high that it's over the mountains. Lord, I pray that they give it to you. And I pray that they understand that you don't have to understand how Jesus does it because I'm lost in that myself. He's too good, but he is good. And he's my joy. And I pray that he is everybody's joy in here when they leave out of here. So Lord, I love you. I praise your son, Jesus. And as we stand, we're going to worship and sing as... Glorious tunes to his name. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, first of all, we're going to give Justin a hand clap for what a wonderful message that, that was. Thank you, Justin. And uh,
Toby preached last week on peace, Justin obviously today on joy, two of the best messages on peace and joy that I've ever heard, and um, thanks to uh, Bethany, those are always on YouTube, so you can go back and watch them, but definitely worth going back and listening to peace and then uh, re-listening to joy as well, um, took a lot from those, so you should give those guys some hugs for the work that they put into those messages. Um, next week, just to keep everybody in the loop, uh, is going to be December 24th, Christmas Eve, we're going to have just normal morning services, just as normal. Um, so we'll have uh, services in the morning, and then we'll have our candlelight Christmas Eve service. It'll start at 6 p.m. on the 24th next Sunday evening, okay? So uh, if you're in town, you got your family, um, everybody come on up, and we'll have, it'll be about a 20 minute, 20, 25, 30 minute Christmas Eve service. Candlelight service, I'll be singing Silent Night, so you'll wanna make sure that you're here for that. And um, so that's going to be a wonderful time. Um, right when you leave right here, uh, we've got food. We've got hot chocolate. We've got, I don't know. I'm not sure. We've got stuff um, over there. Uh, finger foods kind of, I don't know. I don't know what all we got. We got snacks. Uh, if you love snacks, make sure you just go over here. Just kind of have fun, fellowship, and then um, we'll, we can head out of here. Um, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to actually just kind of dismiss everybody. You go do your thing. Uh, Toby, Justin, and myself will be up here. If anybody needs to pray for anything, you need prayer, uh, you're struggling with something, uh, maybe uh, you, like, you're like you really interested in the joy thing, but you're like, man, this is just not really clicking in my mind. I don't understand how Jesus can lead me to joy. Maybe, maybe you're like, I really want that, but it doesn't make sense. Man, come on up here and let us try to explain it and we'll work through it with you as well. So um, just follow the crowd Go to the other side if you want some food. I'm going to pray and then come on up if you need some prayer. Um, let me read uh, the blessing uh, first uh, before we dismiss and before I pray. Numbers chapter 6, verse 22, it says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Tell Aaron and his sons to bless the people of Israel with a special blessing. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor, favor and give you his peace. Whenever Aaron and his sons bless the people of Israel in my name, I myself, God, will bless them. All right, Heavenly Father, thank you for today. And God, I thank you for uh, your word that was able to be preached today. God, I thank you for the Holy Spirit just uh, speaking through Justin. And Father, we're thankful that we can have joy, not, uh, not based on our circumstances, but based only on your son, Jesus Christ. And that's where our true joy is found. Thank you for Justin talking about priorities and just making that um, an emphasis for us to um, go into our lives and to spend some time with you in prayer to examine our hearts and see what our priorities are. And, and I loved what Justin said, that if our priorities are not in order, Father, we will lead a miserable life. We will continue striving, trying to gain joy and all we're going to find is happiness, but that is circumstantial. Joy is not. So Father, we thank you for Jesus. Uh, Lord, we thank you for all that you've done. You know I pray. Amen. All right. Love you guys. Y'all are dismissed.